You know, Stretch, it's a proud moment to come this far with Sports Friday with Stretch and Z. We now have the best of show, and, and we have our own dressing rooms. All the accoutrements of success, a place where we can sit and concept these fabulous shows, a, a place to come to, you might say. Uh, thoughts are flying, uh, ideas are, are growing. Because this is our first best of show, but undoubtedly the first of many. Well, and, and what feels best about it is to know that Midwest Sports Channel thinks enough of us to give us our own dressing rooms. One minute, one minute to go. Well, I'll tell you, Zee, no matter how many times you do it, you still feel the excitement. Huh? No, you know, a best of show always brings a lump to my throat. I'll tell you. There you are, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Save it. Ah, I got it. It's on. Really? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Oh, that's the next one. That's something for you. Too. See you on the set. Cheapskates. <laughs> Best of Sports Friday is brought to you tonight by Stretch and Z Products, specializing in items that make your life a little less agonizing. Stretch and Z Products, available wherever you see yellow and black labels. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present the only broadcasting team that was too daring for Donahue, too odious for Oprah, too hot for Geraldo. Here they are, Stretch and Z. <laughs> Thank you, John. I don't know. I don't think we should let him write his own copy again in the future. No, no. And uh, <laughs> it's too bad, too, because he's a respected figure in broadcasting, and after this... He was. Yeah. You know, there's, there's so much ground to cover tonight, such a historic moment for television. The question is, where do we get started? Well, when, when you use the words best of and you're talking about Sports Friday. I don't think there's any question that uh, one of the things you have to think about is, uh, well, possibly the list. Oh, I kind of thought you were going to say the cliché, but, um, I mean, the list is okay, don't get me wrong, but yeah. I think when people think of uh, Sports Friday, they, they kind of think cliché test. Well, that, uh, I think many people do, those that aren't thinking list uh, originally. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, I... You know, I, I can see both sides of the issue. Yeah, I mean, why? We don't need to be. We're old buddies here. There's no need for. Uh, there's no need for false modesty. Let's face it. They're both great features. People love them both, and I think we should take a look at them right now. Both of them. Now you have one of your fabulous lists for us tonight. Well, you know, uh, it's been an international week here yeah. on, on on sports uh, world, and, and there have been sports threats and promises made by the Ayatollah. Okay. And we were lucky enough to we were lucky enough to get those. Uh, you know, the first uh, the first thread on his list, cut off hands of the human insect who stole my copy of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. <laughs> really, that issue is not much good without your hands. That's true, <laughs> and you and I both know that. Yep. Uh, his second threat, put bounty on Dick Vitale for the good of the game. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the country at large. Yes. Uh, his third threat and promise, instant and horrible death for the blasphemous reporter who called me the Steinbrenner of Islam. I think that was Ruth Spencer who said that. I think it could have been. Yeah. Uh, the fourth threat from the Ayatollah, cut out the tongue of Merlin Olson if he calls me turban head one more time. He's getting tough. That one. 
Uh, his fifth threat, stop the flow of oil to any nation that allows athletes to place my picture on their protective <laughs> cup. Oh. Well, it's, you know, the Ayatollah knows what's going on in sports. And his final threat, order suicide commandos to every NBA game until Salman Rushdie stops claiming he can outdunk me. <laughs> That Salman, he's a, he's a space eater. Well, and those threats will live long in the sports community. No question about it. I want to get a look at this one more time because this is really esoteric. And uh, I hope this isn't going to be as tough as the one. Okay, two now watch three. this. The guy, see that there? Okay. Man goes up for the shot. Now the fall is called, and it's going to be, it's going to be on the Gophers. Clem okay. can't believe it. Now there's a certain, there's a certain rule involved here, that Clem is invoking. And as an announcer, what you got to say here is, it, it violated this rule. This is so esoteric. I don't know, it's, it's almost unkind. Well, we'll give him a shot. Let's give it a shot. Anybody with us here? We have a caller? We got uh, Moundsview, we got Chuck. Chuck? Chuck? Are you there, Chuck? Yeah, I'm here, how are you, there? How are you doing? Pretty good. This he... is tough. Why, why is Clem so upset? What's he saying his player has the right to here? The lane. Right to the lane. Well, that's, that's not quite it. Well, I'm gonna, I wonder if I should, should give him a little hint here. But what it involves here, what it involves here is he's saying that when you go, when you, when you go up, when you're standing up, you have the right to stand there. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to back up. You have the right to at least stand up. It's a, it's a principle that's involved. Let's try line two. Who do we have? We've got Todd from Plymouth. Todd. Plymouth. Todd? We're a little bit ahead of the phone guys tonight. You with us, Todd? Give him another drive there. It's just like the old days, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had this thing fixed. I, I've been bragging to people not. about what a great phone system well, we've got Well, I know. We now. were talking about how Bill Craig Okay, we got everything. Brad on line four. Brad on line four. Brad? Brad? Yeah, I got it. It's He's... the uh, principal of verticality, That's it. baby. All right. <laughs> Wait, hey. Brad. Brad. Brad that, uh, was a, that was Brad. Let me hear that again, Brad. Principal of verticality, baby. He's uh, That's right. Brad, are you related to Dick Vital? Dick is my uncle. I, uh, my condolences, Brad. <laughs> that was a fabulous Dick Vitale. No, Dick's great at family reunions. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, you earn these hockey tickets, although if, you're, if you know enough basketball to know that, I don't know that you want He's to see that. He's got cheering in the background. No, this guy, yeah, we were having kind of a sports Friday party here. Okay. Watching a lot of Dick Vitale lately? Oh, as much as we can. Now, when Too a guy much. puts up the three-point shot, what does Dick yell? Go for the try, Victor! There you go. <laughs> fabulous. Jeez. <laughs> this guy's got it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you earned these hockey tickets. We're going to put you on hold. Stand by. We'll get your name and address, and we'll shoot these tickets out to you. Two tickets to the March 4 game with the Islanders. It's... Thanks a lot, baby. Love your show. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Dick, he's a prime time player. Oh, man. All right, Just a PTP. It's hard, to, it's hard to think there's two of them out there. <laughs> that was great. All right, we're going to take a break, come back. And we got, uh, we can't get rid of this guy, but. Uh, you know, Dick, it's just like the real Dick Vitale. It won't once, go away. Once you turn him on, you cannot turn the guy off. And like so many of you, we're now asking ourselves, why do they call this a best of show? Well, hopefully we'll be seeing in the next segment uh, why they call it that with uh, some of the celebrities that have joined us. Yeah, we've got a lot of big personalities here. Uh, Pete Rose, Steve Garvey, right. Barbara Bush. It's just amazing we don't get sued because these impersonations are so uncanny. Yeah. And Rin Tin Tin, too. I think you'll see what we mean in just a minute. There she was, just walking down the street singing. How would you guys feel about becoming the official Sports Friday Orchestra? What are sports? Have you guys ever played a lounge act uh, on Neptune? Uh, no, not that I remember. It could have happened, but I, I generally it remember lounge acts. It was Pluto. It wasn't Neptune. It was Pluto. Yeah. Okay. You don't, you don't know sports. How about Friday? Are you familiar with that concept? Uh, Friday. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's the day after. That's your timekeeping units here, isn't it? Yeah. I see. So I, I got to ask you the question, do you have a gambling problem? Gambling problem? No way. You know, finding a good barber, that's a problem. 
<laughs> now, uh, earlier this week, you were, you were quoted as saying that uh, if I were a gambling man, I'd be willing to bet you that I never bet on baseball. Is that true? All right, all right. So I lost that bet. But I tell you what, I need to get well. So I'll lay you 10 to 1 that you can't tell the difference between uh, Gunther Tootie on Car 54 and Marge Schott. I am still the number one sports fan and plan to keep my close ties to the world of sports in my new venture. So the next time you see me at the ballpark, remember what this face has meant to sports and let me hear you yell nice and loud, hey, Hal, that'll be two with extra mustard. And if you're a little down on your luck, don't worry. You know that I'll be happy to loan you whatever it takes to get you into a foot long with extra relish. <laughs> At terms so easy, you'd swear you were buying a 75 foot mobile home instead of a couple of tube stakes with all the trimmings. We've done business before. Let's do business again and cheer those twins on to victory while we do it. Hey, get your red hots here. But uh, you know, it's my belief that every woman in America should have a chance to bear my child. And it uh, looks like you've got two very satisfied customers with you right now. Well, yes. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Millie. That's Mary. Oh, Mary, I'm sorry. Uh, whatever. And uh, this is Lucy. That's Linda. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, well, whatever. Now, now Mary, uh, uh, tell me, weren't you a little nervous about this, this whole uh, surrogate experience? Oh, sure. I, I tried everything, diets, high baths, exotic oils, and I just couldn't get pregnant. Besides, I had talked to Steve's ex-wife, Cindy, and she assured me that it would only take a minute. I see. <laughs> and uh, what about you, Linda? Well, you know how these things go. With me, it was word of mouth. Mary assured me I had nothing to worry about, and it was true. It was really no big deal. In fact, I did it during the lunch hour and was back to work by one. Yeah. Just that simple, huh? I hardly felt a thing. Yes. <laughs> That's great. You know, we, we came close to crossing the line with that piece. I, I think it was okay, but there was another time. And you know what I'm talking about, uh, that hockey piece. I still think, I don't know, maybe we went too far. Well, that, the Garvey piece was a proud moment, but the hockey piece with Barbara Bush, I think we taught people uh, some sportsmanship. You know. It really just seems like yesterday when we were out there at the Met Center Ice with Barbara Bush and Kurt Fraser. Yeah. yeah, I remember the good old days. Lenny Bruce used to say to me, Clancy, you can't be too outrageous. That's why I think you guys ought to show that bit where the hockey player beats up Barbara Bush. Well, John, we were thinking of doing that piece on these sports stars who volunteer for the United Way. I don't know, John. I mean, the presidency is our most sacred institution. Uh, I don't think I'd feel right taking a shot at the first lady. You clowns just won't wise up. Sure, go ahead, do what you want to do, but don't come crying to me when they start calling you a couple of Boy Scouts. It's quiet here at the Met Center, but in a little while I have a feeling that, well, all hell is going to break loose. Because I'm here with Mark Zelenovich and Kurt Frazier of the Minnesota North Stars, and they're going to help us demonstrate some of the more esoteric points of hockey. Well, that's right, Mike. You know, uh, we're trying to make the National Hockey League a kinder, gentler hockey league. And, well, the best way to do that is to show young people just what is a penalty and what is not a penalty. And so we've enlisted the assistance of Kurt Fraser today. He and I will demonstrate. And, Kurt, uh, how can you tell when a penalty is really a deserved penalty? Well, it's, it's a tough job for the refs because you've got to watch for a real clear infraction out there. And uh, a, a penalty now... Uh, you know, it can be confused with a lot of guys who are diving. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of small guys in the league that like to take these dives and that. But uh, a real penalty, you know, you can tell when it is and that, a high stick or whatever. So that's why we're here today, give a few examples. So in other words, if you're going to get nailed for a penalty, the key here is get your money's worth. Oh, for sure. You know, you might, if you're going to get two minutes, you might as well take a two minutes worth. So Why don't you give us an example then of a, a real quality kind of penalty? With, with my help. Absolutely. Okay. Let's go. Let's say I take Z into the boards with a good check. My elbow pops up in the air as we hit the glass. I may not have touched him with my elbow, but I'm going to get a penalty anyway. So in other words, you've been penalized without committing a crime. I exactly. So that's why you want to, uh, you know, if, you get it, if you're going to get a penalty, for some reason if you're mad at somebody, you want to take them out and make sure you get them good. I don't think we want to 
want to see that one again. All right, but what about all these penalties that kind of look alike? You got high sticking, slashing, spearing, butt ending. How do I tell them apart? Well, uh, watch closely and I'll demonstrate with Z again. Uh, I tell you what, since the National Hockey League is trying to become a kinder, gentler hockey league, I think it might be more appropriate if uh, we called on First Lady Barbara Bush to help us tell the difference between spearing and slashing. There she is over there. This is a spear. This is a slap. Hi, Kurt. <laughs> this is a butt end. Oh, are you all right? Oh, my God. Call, call the White House gynecologist. We better get you over to Walter Reed right away. This this is a tragedy. Oh my God, this is horrible. And a layman is often confused about the difference between roughing and fighting. Uh, just just how do you tell them apart? Well, roughing could be any kind of a, a cheap shot uh, or punch. Um, you know, maybe without dropping the gloves. And uh, a fight would be like a series of punches when the gloves come off, and, uh, and you know, you can tell it's a real fight. That's it, baby. Stick and jab, stick and jab, left to right, left, left, right. Beautiful, beautiful. Ooh, nice combination. <laughs> well, I'm uh, certainly glad we could clear that up, especially for those Pee Wee and Bantam players at home. And would like to thank Kurt Frazier and Barbara Bush for their help. Yes, I think that even John Ziegler would agree that once we can identify a penalty, we can focus a thousand points of light on it and stay the course until the proper player is sent to the penalty box. Then and only then will we have a kindler, a gentler National Hockey League. For Sports Friday, I'm Mike Gelfand. Uh, well, thank goodness for a kindler and gentler <laughs> National well, Hockey League. It's one of the great things about Sports Friday. We're right up there, blemishes and all. We make a mistake. We don't gloss it over. Not like some of these guys with their hair spray and their makeup. I think that's obvious. And you were excited by that piece, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Just as I'm excited by showing the folks at home uh, the more journalistic side of Sports Friday. If, if there is one. And we'll see that in just a minute. have any particular favorites uh, who we might have as a guest. Maybe uh, oh, a Tom Kelly, a uh, Dutch Kastenbaum. Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Uh, there you see it. Another uh, satisfied viewer of Sports Friday with Stretch and Z about to get hit by the Ebenezer home bus. interrupt this program for a special news report. <coughs> this is Walter Cronkite. It started out innocently enough. A group of cable uprighters had organized a celebration to commemorate the last day of business for Sports Friday. As the group celebrated, hundreds of men looking for cheap thrills filed into the offices of Sports Friday buying sale copies of the remaining Sports Friday videotapes. But then things turned ugly. 
Stretch and Z began to argue with the cable operators over the public's right to enjoy inflammatory, sensationalized programming. The rest is history, and that's the way it is. Yes, there is a, a serious side to Sports Friday, and I think that's why so many of the major figures in sports today have agreed to come on the show and be subjected to our relentless grilling. Well, and of course, most of them with the proviso that the tape never run. Yes, and uh, or at least that no one ever be able to see it. And fortunately, most of the cable systems in the Twin Cities have accommodated that request. It's been very nice of them, too, but now you get to see what they've been missing. Do you have a question for Denny? Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Uh, Denny, yeah. one question. Do you have a, what do you think about the fact that maybe like Ferguson Jenkins and Gaylord Perry are apparently shut out of the Hall of Fame? Well, I, I've got a very valid opinion, I think, on it, too, and a strong opinion. I don't know how a 267 hitter gets in ahead of a guy who won over 300 ball games. Uh, John Bench was a great catcher, no question about it. But it's a lot tougher to win 300 ball games than it is to hit 267. And uh, I just firmly believe, and Ferguson Jenkins will never get in. He had the problem, and they'll never let him in. It, on ESPN a few weeks ago, I saw five sports writers sitting around talking about anything they do off the field should not be considered. But then they polled the five writers, and two of them said, I didn't vote for him because he had a problem. So uh, it doesn't make any sense. He belongs there. Fergie Jenkins, uh, or uh, Gaylord Perry, certainly belongs there. And I don't think Gaylord will now get in for a long, if at all, until he gets on the old time list. Yeah. Because there's too many guys coming along, they're going to make it on the first ballot. Well, and then you've got all those knuckleheads who claim that the games that he, he won uh, were invalidated by the fact that he threw a spitball. Listen, which, I don't you know, care if you win 350 games pitching against, pitch, pitching against Helen Keller and Stevie Wonder. <laughs> That's 300 wins, and it takes a lot of ability Stevie to Stevie has that. a little trouble with the high fastball. No, the curveball. <laughs> but I'll tell you, nobody could go to the opposite field like Helen. You know? the, only, the only question was, did it make a sound when Sorry she hit Sorry I brought it, it up. It's an existential question, actually. We got to uh, what line three? We've got Jimmy from Brooklyn Park. Jimmy, have you got a question for Floyd? Uh, Jay from Minneapolis. Jay from Minneapolis. We'll would get you, you next. Would you change your, your name to Jimmy? We passed, no, 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 we no, passed no, over Jimmy, Jay. but we'll get it. But uh, I wanted to ask Sergeant Rock, and uh, you know, as one who knows, I wanted to ask him about Z's hair. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's quite popular right now. It looks like it's been cut by a lawnmower that needs sharpening. <laughs> But a lot of the foot, but a lot of the football players have the same kind of cut, and and if you can picture the type of football players that I work with, I, I accept about anything, uh, diamond earrings Even and the Dudwell's hair. You know, I can't stand it. I, I couldn't believe that these guys wear these pantyhoses to go out to practice to keep their thighs from pulling, well, and they wear the diamond earrings in their speak. ears. I can't take that stuff, but I've learned to live and with speak. it. Jeez. So how do you what? now? Now you you move from Indiana. Back door, move. Murray. <laughs> so you moved from Indiana. Can't take a cue. I think he's posting he's off. On my hat. <laughs> Poor Murray. Be cool, Murray. Murray's cool now. Can you get it? Got it. Got his apple on. Okay. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> get him. Well, do you notice, Pat, too, that Murray the dog has been shackled while you're here? Oh, that's uh, Stay very still. He's still under that. control. Conspicuous by his absence. That dog uh, wouldn't last uh, <laughs> 24 hours. Soul Korea. He's <laughs> <laughs> got side dish written all over him, doesn't he? Yep. That's soul food. He's an old and tender. He hasn't moved around a lot. <laughs> but uh, don't mind Murray there. He's, uh, he's worked up kind of a man size. He looks like he'd make a big enough to play on my defensive line. Look <laughs> yeah. at him. He's available, and I'm his agent. So. Uh, and he's, uh, he's failed all previous, or uh, passed all previous urine tests. So uh, he, he eats like Millard right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I coach my uh, daughter's team. I'm an assistant coach, and my daughter's so team. So do you? You throw a little Bobby Knight in there. You harass them, call them names. Bobby, I do. Slap I do. Around a little. <laughs> Murray's not paying attention to this thing. <laughs> you know, it's he's an incorrigible player. Ever since he signed that letter of intent, I tell you, he's just he's, been, he's kind of the Adrian Dantley of uh, Sports Friday. Considered one of the top ten prospects in Minnesota this he's year. He's big. Yeah, he's big. He's and, big. Uh, he's like he moving the lane. He can fill the lane. He's a space eater. In fact, he'll eat almost anything. Oh, That's look. That's great thing about Murray. <laughs> What's Murray doing now? Well, well, he's just drooling he's a little just bit. Drooling. That's, That's all. God. That's his trainer That's there. That's awful. All right. God. <laughs> Cut. Now, do these... <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 this the, is the worst <laughs> show in America. <laughs> there's, there's not, there are not many shows that could combine sports knowledge 
with the care and feeding of an animal. <laughs> well, except the, except the post-game Viking shows. <laughs> By the time I was uh, in my 10th year managing, when I got up in the morning, I tried to remember what I wore the last time we played this team, how we did, what I ate for breakfast, how I held the phone, what hand I dialed the phone in, what I drove, <laughs> which road I took to the rink, what station I had on. When Doesn't I got, everybody do that? It, it, it gets to the point, I, I'd get come out and I'd walk around the chair four times this way, four times that way. If they scored first, I'd come up and do two each way. Mm -hmm. And then if, uh, when I was walking out from the uh, press room, uh, if we were at home, I didn't want to see the opposition first, so I'd turn my head. And, <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, so, you, by the end of the night, I was tired, so and I didn't even play. So. Well, did you just get to a point where you, you sat down and said, you know, I think I'm a fruitcake, or I mean... Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Should they move off campus, I, I, I'm in agreement with Rick Bay that they should not do that. Uh, do you, do you just, speak to Rick Bay very often? Yeah, Rick and I were office next to each other in Michigan. He was the wrestling coach he, and I was the assistant. Can, could you give him a call and ask him to come on this show? <laughs> we asked, he we has asked. avoided you so far. Well, Rick, Rick's, <laughs> Rick's kind of paying the same attention to us that those cheerleaders in high school did. It <laughs> seems like their Fridays are kind of booked for about the next 10 years. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and our complexion is cleared and, uh, and it's still not available. I don't know so. what it is. I think we Do I get a finder's fee if <laughs> yeah. I get in there? Yeah. Right, you get a lunch the with Sid. The same as I'm getting tonight. Right, exactly. Okay. <laughs> lunch with Sid advice. <laughs> okay. So uh, the other schools do the same. So every time one of the other four teams in the tournament wins, we get one ninth of one hundred twenty-five thousand. So now, if you if you if you get past the, the second round, would you be thinking about the new sport coat? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a. <laughs> you think I need one? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not knocking the one you're wearing. I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> Actually, I, I like asked it. my wife how this would look on television. She said she thought it looked fine, but well, evidently she was wrong. It's great because it's kind of like camouflage with the chairs around you. <laughs> well, so. well I, I'm not the interior designer. I can't be responsible for the basketball team in the lobby at the same time. Well, you know, I, I think it would be enough if we were just trained professional journalists. But I think what gives us that extra credibility is... Well, the fact that we're also participants. That's right. Uh, Hard-hitting inquisitors and also uh, participants on the field. And uh, also we've learned how to make a buck with the Stretch and Z products. So we've got all avenues yeah. of sport covered. I think people will see that this is a show that sells. Whether they like it or not, guests of Sports Friday receive the Stretch and Z Lawn Owl and Windsock. <laughs> I can't remember the next line. The Stretch and Z Windsock not only lets drunken neighbors know they're at the wrong townhouse, but <laughs> now they'll never need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. Stretch and Z Lawn Owl, available at better liquidators everywhere. Excuse me, sir. We would like to ask you a, a question. Uh, I, I suppose you gentlemen are.
pretty excited about Sports Friday with Stretch and Z being on the air now. I have no idea what you're talking about. You and so many other viewers in the Twin Cities who feel that way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are you guys ready to get down to business yet? You know, you know, the babes, the scandals, all the good stuff. Don't you think we'd be letting down all those young viewers who, who kind of look up to Stretch and Z as role models? And, and, and think about the guys in management here, John. The, the guys who, well, they've, they've stuck with us through thick and thin. What about, what about Mr. Ruff? Hey, I've got the Ruffster in my hip pocket. What about your reputation? Yeah, what about your Sunday show? Get wise, you potato heads. Forget that public service stuff. This is where the action is. Unless, of course, you wimps aren't up to it. Ah, I suppose we're just going to have to look at another milk toast bit like that one you did in the batting cage. Well, but don't forget, someday I'm going to take control of this industry. Then you'll run the bits I tell you to run. I thought it was a good piece. Yeah. I mean, it, Jeez, I'm sorry. I didn't want to offend anyone. I just thought... It's okay. quiet right now at Grand Slam USA, but in a few minutes, ZL... I've got a feeling all hell is going to break loose. Well, Stretch, I, I think that, well, all hell might break loose here because, you know, it's, it's springtime, and I hear the call to play ball. And that's uh, just what we're going to do in a minute. We're going to step into the batting cage. Uh, Todd Johnson is here with us, the proprietor here at Grand Slam USA. Now, looks like a piece of cake. Uh, what can we expect? Well, it is a piece of cake, uh, Stretch. Um, we can pitch the, the strikes, and it's up to you to hit them. Now, how fast is the is the ball going to go? Uh, right now, you're going to hit about a 55 mile an hour pitch. <laughs> 55 mile an hour. That's like a Scott McGregor curveball. This is going to be yeah, a piece Scott of cake. Scott McGregor fastball. Uh, Scott, it's, this is going to be. This is nothing. This will be. This will be like hitting Shane Raleigh on his worst day. You know, I think we have a an idea of how easy it's going to be because Mr. Bemis is about to step in here, and I kind of have a feeling that if he can hit the ball, pretty much anybody can. All right, buddy, let's see you hit it. Yeah, ah. yeah. Come on, Bemis. Huh? All right. Try not to get a hernia in there, pal. Yeah, so <laughs> you look like Joan Collins. Hey, nice going, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of starting to have second thoughts about this. That ball looks kind of fast. Well, now, this, it's really humming. I know. This isn't going to pose any threat to us, is it? Gee, Stretch, we've had six-year-olds sitting there. What, were they, they lived by nuclear reactors, or are you talking about ordinary six-year-olds? Ordinary six-year-olds. All right, I guess if, well, if I, they can hit it. I suppose. Well, let's give it a shot. Could we get a deal here where we could just pay you for everyone we hit? I'd rather you paid me for everyone you missed. <laughs> <laughs> Minute ball is, I can't believe it. A good hitting, as you know, Mark, starts with good technique. Well, uh, like so many things in life. That's correct. But good technique alone will not do it. You have to have the proper equipment, the proper diet. I believe you can demonstrate just what we're well, talking too, about. Yeah, if, if you're going to uh, start hitting right away, you got to protect the hands. The hands, very so important. Batting gloves are very important. Okay, and those, uh, those would be pretty much the standard ones that you would use. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And... Uh, of course, proper footwear is vital. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to go in there, you, you don't want people thinking that you're a hot dog or that you're going to try and show them up with the long spikes or anything. You can kind of throw them off their game with the proper footwear. And, and the nice thing about this footwear is it'll keep you warm and, and also safe. Yeah, right, right. And, now, and it makes a fashion statement for spring. I believe it does. Now, we also talked about diet. Obviously, you have to eat to win in this business. 
Well, you do, and and of course, fiber is all important when you're when you're playing ball. And uh, a lot of guys say, I don't have time to uh, prepare a proper meal and step into a batting cage to work out. Ah, well, here's this trick: you bring uh, you bring your food with you to the batting cage. You tuck this puppy into the pocket before you get into the cage. You work up a good sweat, and and pretty much your evening meal cooks while you're hitting. And then, of course, the other thing is that with that in your pocket, it doubles your chance of getting a date after the game. Exactly. Exactly my point. Stretch and Z here for Sports Friday. Camera person. Well, there was another proud moment in the uh, history of Sports Friday with Stretch and Z. I think we can all agree. One of many. And, uh, of course, uh, another thing that uh, we're quite proud of here is the contribution of our own John Gallus. A lot of you see him as an announcer, but he contributes behind the scenes with uh, inspiration and, uh, and leadership. Yeah, what he can do is he can take a seemingly ordinary interview and well, just put a few little twists and turns into it and, and make it a memorable moment of television history. Something special. Yeah, we'll see it in a minute. Working on a night moves Trying to make some front page driving news Working on a night moves Are you in need of a pen pal, a confidant, a safe and therapeutic release for those pent-up feelings of aggression? Then, why not write? to Stretch and Z. Send your cards and letters to Sports Friday, 11th on the Mall, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55403. And please, no CODs. I saw that sense of your piece, but it's the same old stuff. Bunch of talking heads. Say, why don't we jazz it up a little bit? Uh, let's do a gonzo job on the kid. <laughs> but, but John, what about the journalistic integrity we've come to stand for on Sports Fridays? Yeah, John, look, look, I know what you're getting at here. I don't think it's right. I mean, Bob Sansevier represents the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Now, that's that's the most important institution of democracy we have in this community, John. I, I think something like that would be dangerous. Dangerous? Dangerous? I'm going to tell you the same thing I told Sam Kinison the other day. Comedy is always dangerous. We're very pleased to be here with Bob Sansevier, the uh, writer for the Minneapolis Star Tribune, best known for his commentary on football, but also something of a basketball expert. Bob, of course, predicted Seton Hall would, would make it to the finals, and I said I was so sure that they wouldn't make it that we'd have them on Sports Friday if they did. Hey, let's back up on a second. You're not pleased that I'm here. It's just that you lost the bet. That's the only reason I'm here. That's well, honesty in journalism. That's right. And that's, that's what we've come to expect from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. I, I don't understand this. We, we invite the guy onto our set. We, uh, we welcome him here. We, uh, we give him all the benefits of a Sports Friday guest. He immediately turns on. Just him. setting the record straight. I'm very pleased to be here. I want to tell you, this is a, I actually, I love the set because I'm flashing back. It reminds me of, um, of an old apartment I had. I'm sure you've had a few people who've had that. But this is, I like this. It's cozy. Well, and we live here when we're not doing the show, so. When you're watching it on TV, it looks like it's somebody's uh, living room you just walked into. It's great. Well, that's the way we intend it, nice and cozy. Now, do you have any thoughts about your future as a newspaper guy? I don't think it's going to be that big. If you were to leave the newspaper business today, what do you think people would say about you? A, uh, out, there's just the guy who got out when it was time. Well, Bob, uh, as a youngster, you grew up in New Jersey, but I know that you, you followed sports and news all around the country. What? What were your early impressions of Lee Harvey Oswald? My idol when I was a kid. Is that right? I figured anybody who can, uh, who can make a living doing what he was doing without knowing anything about sports, he's my kind of guy. Bob, I understand that when you were a kid, still in fact in junior high school, there was a guy who lived down the street from you who kind of took an interest in you and nurtured your career as a, as a journalist. Can you tell us a little about him? Uh, 
Very bad situation if he came here. I, I don't think the guy should have been allowed to come here, and he, he wasn't. Because he, I mean, he's a convicted rapist. So you wouldn't have any particular role model? If you look, if you look around the country, you won't find many of any people who, uh, like Sid, that type of journalist. I looked at your notes before. He is an egomaniac, and I'll tell you, he's arrogant and he's abrasive, and he may get a copy of this. I'm not going to say anything <laughs> else. Um, what kind of behavior can get you fired at the Star and Tribune? Probably if I sat here and ripped Sid. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, now you've covered some unusual stories. I, I know you covered that, uh, that uh, Native American gay football league in North Dakota, and uh, I believe you had an interesting comment on that. There was a running back the Giants had drafted uh, years ago, and um, he had, to give you an idea how, how sm smart he was, he flunked out of Oklahoma. <laughs> and he wound up going to a central state Oklahoma, and uh, one of the linemen probably summed him up best when he said, here's a guy that he'd be great if we could put arrows on the butts of all the linemen. Oh, God, I hope he doesn't give us that boring old story about the high school coach who wanted to hit him. I, I was covering a high school event years ago when I was, like 10 years ago, and a high school coach, not only do they threaten, see, people, when they threaten to kill you, it's one thing, but when they come after you and start swinging, that's another thing. That's probably the time I was most uh, fearful for my life. He had to be restrained by a few people. Bob, uh, as an investigative reporter, you've, you've covered many things outside of football. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your achievements in uh, uncovering the uh, Jessica Hahn affair? Uh, whenever I read my own stuff, I'm, I'm amazed at the, uh, the ability I have to get to the bottom of things. We, we hear a lot about the uh, intelligent sports writer in, in today's uh, media market. Uh, could you tell us just what is your IQ? I think it's uh, .0653 or 4. I was just looking that up yesterday, as a matter of fact. I suppose now we're going to hear for the one millionth time how he picked Harvard to win the hockey tournament. I don't follow hockey that closely. I'm the first one to admit that, even though I did pick Harvard to win the... Uh, the NCAA hockey after having seen two hockey, college hockey games in my life. How do you feel about your readers? Um, basically how stupid some of them are, because they're just such bobos. What do you suppose that your sources, the people you're on an intimate basis with, how do they describe you? Oh, I'm sure they rip me to, to shreds. I mean, even the ones I get along with and, uh, and like and have a good rapport with, I'm sure that they rip me. Any, any particular story or column stand out uh, as something you're most proud of? Something I'm most proud of. There's uh, probably, I mean, I enjoy doing feature stories because you take some time to work on them. Well, one thing I know for sure, that wretched piece he wrote on Lawrence Taylor was one of the worst pieces of dribble I've ever read in a newspaper. Actually, one story I really enjoyed was uh, Lawrence Taylor's rookie year. I spent um, a lot of time with him and talking to people that he knew, and. What's interesting now, in retrospect, the way he's changed. I mean, he was the greatest kid in the world coming out of college, and now he's, uh, his whole view of life has been skewed. I think living in New York has done it, and just the, you know, the media out there has, has done it, but he's done it to himself, too. What would you say is, is your single biggest difficulty in, in writing a good story? Constipation, at times. We hear a lot of talk about Huffman making a comeback. Do you think they could find a defensive lineman that he could dominate? Well, we'd probably have to dig up uh, maybe Eisenhower to do that. And uh, I don't like getting my hands dirty. Well, Bob, uh, in the National Football League, you're certainly around a lot of gorgeous cheerleaders all the time. And you know, being a real man like you are, I was, I was wondering if you could tell us uh, your, your dating preferences on the NFL circuit. I'd probably opt for the barnyard animal. Any, any one in particular? Uh, I'm not really that particular when it comes to barnyard animals. Probably a smaller one so I could be the dominant. Please. What did Floyd Peters say when you asked him that question? <laughs> he mentioned you, but... Uh, um, I told him never to talk about that. Bob, a lot of kids out here grow up dreaming about being a big-time metropolitan journalist. Frankly, you're, you are their role model. Can you tell them when you finally get to cover that big story, the Super Bowl, what do you like to wear? Um, I'd probably go for the low-cut sequin. I think it shows off, you know, it's, it's kind of nice and breezy. You could, though you can't wear it anywhere to any event. What about the Bob Sansevier at leisure? What do you like to do after a hard day at work? Jerk. Well, now, Bob, you've, you've covered the uh, National Football League for a number of years. You've, you've been a writer. You've experienced that. Uh, I know you're known as a renaissance man. Uh, what do you think uh, your next endeavor will be? 
at the great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, the A&P back in New Jersey. Well, we really want to thank you for coming by today for your candid and, quite frankly, often shocking answers. It was a pleasure. We do appreciate it, and we hope that when you get back to the Star and Trib, you will say hello to Sid for us. And well, maybe goodbye, too, based on what you said about him. Well, the pleasure was all yours. Thank you. Well, that, I know that was a highlight for both of us. I mean, other journalists get to investigate the background on uh, Ted Bundy or Richard Speck. Uh, we got to do Bob Sansevier. And you know, somehow the public's right to know seems a little less sacred tonight. Well, and probably they'll be demanding that they don't know in the future. But you know, this is more than just a, a journalistic show. This is also a variety show. That's right. We, uh, we like to entertain. And in a minute, we'll do just that. What you want. Most guests on Sports Friday receive a pair of genuine Stretch and Z rubber gloves. The perfect rubber glove for all occasions. Whether you're performing a delicate medical procedure, attending a party with broadcast executives, or just dressing for your own amusement, You'll be happy you're wearing genuine Stretch and Z rubber gloves. The voice is unmistakable, the face unforgettable. He's touched millions of hearts throughout the world, and now through this special TV offer, Sports Friday presents the video treasure of a lifetime, John Gallus, All My Best. From his legendary role as Clancy the Cop to his breathtaking frolic with Bo Derrick, the whole family will laugh and love their way through every minute of this very special collection. <laughs> I can't remember the next line. <laughs> Enjoy the genius of a master craftsman in such inspired portrayals as the caped crusader, the sky-walking Caucasian, and of course, his many other memorable performances with the incorrigible and often misunderstood mainstays of cable TV, Stretch and Z. I can't remember which hand I had it in. <laughs> See, <Sieg heil! laughs> John Gallus, All My Best. It's the culmination of a brilliant career by one of the great character actors the world has ever known. And it's yours for the amazingly low price of just $39.95. Yes, $39.95. The offer includes John Gallus, the thrill seeker, as he plummets to earth at speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour. Watch John as he wrestles alligators in central Louisiana. And don't miss John's historic journey into space. That's one small step for man, and one giant leap for mankind. This video is very special to me, and I hope it's, it's special for you, too. <laughs> no home should be without this extraordinary work. Available on VHS. Don't wait. Order yours today. And this is in honor of uh, Randy Brewer, that famous uh, Minnesota gopher who is now playing in the pros and doing and such a wonderful job. For a million bucks a year. For a million bucks a year. Just about your salary, right? Yeah, Easy. very close. White boy in the NBA played like
like Herman Munster as a golden gopher. Now that white boy is in the NBA all alone. White boy has hands like two by fours. Sometimes he catches it in the store. White boy can't jump and he can't score. He can't score. He can't score. Big finish here, Stretch. Can you help me with this? No. Taking it out? <laughs> Everybody now. White boy <laughs> in the NBA. White boy. Here's the fade. In the NBA. Well, Mark, the lights have been turned off. The audience has gone home. And for most folks, I guess it's a time to rest, but not for us. No, we, we can't be turned off because we know the job is not finished here at Midwest Sports Channel until the, the last bulb is out, until the, well, quite frankly, the last spot is cleaned up. Oh. I guess we better get back to this. Boy, these people can't hey, be answered. I want this place clean. It really was a mess last time when I came out of here. Would you do something about it? Well, so sorry. We're working through shifts. It's really tough. Get this the best we can. Here, I'll get it over to you. Over there. With the Guests of Sports Friday stay at the Twin Cities' most exclusive inn, the Rand Hotel. Whether you're on the lam or just laying low, stay at the Rand, an official member of the 1989 Adopt-A-Rodent campaign. <laughs>